You are listening to the Rewrite the Rules podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Beth. I'm Natalie. And I'm Harriet. Rewrite the Rules podcast releases a new episode every Monday. And we're all about helping you achieve a happier and healthier relationship with food and your body. We're real people with real life experiences. So you can expect us to be keeping it raw and real in each and every episode. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to us on whatever podcast platform you use and share the love with a friend that you think will love this podcast. Now, let's get on to the episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rewrite the Rules podcast. We are now on episode 41 and today's episode is going to be kind of a sequel to episode 37 where Nat and Beth discussed how to navigate fear of other people's opinions of you. So we recognize that it sounds so easy for us to just give advice on how not to care about other people's opinions but we just want this episode to show you how we don't just talk the talk we walk the walk as well. Yes so we are going to be giving you actual examples of when people have said not so nice stuff to us and we're going to discuss how we navigated it whether we think we navigated it in a good way or we navigated it in a bad way and this episode is not intended to make you fearful of other people's not so nice comments because sometimes it does happen but we just want you to feel okay and feel comfortable and confident in getting through it if it does happen. Yeah, so maybe you're listening to this episode because you are very fearful of people's opinions and you just want to break free of that fear. Maybe you've already experienced people not being so nice to you and you just want to learn to be able to cope a little bit better. Whatever your reason, you are in the right place today. Yes, you definitely are. And before we dive deep into this episode, we would just be so grateful if you could just take a minute to review the podcast because it just really helps. Even better, if you are on Apple Podcast, if you could just write a little message in your review, that would be amazing as well. We love to read it. Yes. And of course, please share this episode and the podcast in general, just with anyone you think will benefit from it. Even if you're just sharing it into your friendship WhatsApp group or the friendship messenger group, where do kids chat these days? I don't know, but just pop it in there and we will love you forever. But okay, I'll be ready to get into the app. Yes. So with this episode, we are just aiming to make it a little bit more lighthearted, even though we obviously know that hate comments is a serious and sensitive subject. We obviously do not condone people being absolute dicks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just want to we want to bring some humor and just some light to our experiences. So this won't be a really sad and miserable episode. We want you to feel light after listening to this. And I really think with some sensitive subjects, actually bringing some humor in and some lightness really, really helps. So yes, Beth, do you want to go first and share your first not so nice comment experience? Absolutely. I promise mine start off a bit sad, but they get funnier as we go along. (laughs) Um, And I think if you don't laugh, you will cry. So (laughs) that's what we intend to achieve here. But unfortunately, I do have a really long list, almost an endless list of nasty comments that have been made about my physical appearance. And I do truly believe that a lot of these, um, especially when I was younger, contributed to like all the issues I had with my body and food. But I'm just going to share like the first one that sticks out to me. And it was that I looked like a sumo wrestler. (laughs) For context, this was a comment that I'd received within an argument. The other person was losing the said argument. So sort of turned to critiquing my looks in an attempt to tear me down. Anyone who knows me will know that my thighs have been like a really big insecurity for a long time. Something that I'm now totally over. I love my legs now. But whilst I was like really hardcore into weightlifting, I still love weightlifting. But when I was like, you know, five, six, seven day gym bunny, I had like really strong defined quads and they were beautiful. So for someone to sort of try and take something And I feel like this was a conscious effort for someone to take something that I was enjoying and try and turn it into a negative. They could see that I was having a good time um, and found a new hobby for them to just try and like 
hand me down in that way, I was just like, oh my God, this is so evil of you. And they were just like clearly attempting to body shame me and attempt to encourage me to like give up what I was doing. And I just think it's so nasty. And not that that comment affects me now, but it definitely stuck with me for a very long time. Um, And just looking at like pictures of me from before, it was a clear over-exaggeration. I literally looked nothing like a sumo wrestler. If anything, I was actually like really, really small at the time. And I just reflect back on that argument and thought you were losing the argument. So you attempted to, instead of having something better to say, more educated to say, you just turned to appearances. And I just think that's the weakest form of comeback. I don't know what you think about that, Harriet. I mean, yeah, definitely. I think when you're in an argument, when people know that they're losing, they start to get petty and they just think, what is, how can I cut deep straight away? And then that's why they make these like exaggerated insults as well. Because like, obviously there's nothing wrong with sumo wrestlers, but the (laughs) the fact is that you, you couldn't compare to one, but people yeah. make this such exaggerated insult the, there was a massive misconception especially a couple of years ago in terms of weightlifting mm-hmm. women very much thought that they were going to get big and bulky and we know that that absolutely isn't the case but it was perpetuated constantly throughout people who just weren't educated as well mm-hmm. and i think you know when i'm when i'm in an argument i'm able to stay quite concise quite calm but the second someone would comment um, on me as a person or my body, I think that's when I get upset. And that's mm-hmm. when I wouldn't be able to continue the argument because I'm too busy crying now. Which yeah. is, I laugh about now, but I'm like, oh my God, I literally carried that comment for so long. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a below the belt comment. You, it's so important to recognize these below the belt comments because kind of what we've just said is that's when you can tell that someone is, they know that they're losing. So now they're just reaching. And that's why they've said it, not because that insult is true. You need to let yourself like cry and like be angry when someone does that because it's nasty. Yeah. And also just, yeah, I think what you said about self-awareness it's always key and just being able to dissect why that person responded in that way. Obviously, try not to take their comments to heart, but especially when you are younger, like a lot of the comments, the hate comments we have received were when we were younger. So you're not going to be as well equipped to deal with those things. But as long as you just try and like step back, feel your feelings and know that you know who you are. And if anyone is trying to critique you in that way that they don't deserve your time or energy so if you can just try and walk away and that's definitely the approach I took experience I'm going to share is actually quite similar when we talk about exaggerated (laughs) insults and just as a disclaimer I am going to probably laugh while sharing this (laughs) and I think it's a coping mechanism because I think it's one of those things where if you don't laugh you cry Beth I know you just said that but when I was like in primary school I had a family member compare me (laughs) say I was an elephant (laughs) an elephant compared to my friends um, at school she said you're like an elephant compared to name of one of my best friends at school um I won't name her actual name you're an elephant compared to Susie Mm. and I remember that like that was like I must have been like 10 or younger because this was definitely when I was in primary school and I still remember to this day being called an elephant in comparison to my friends which is just like like the sumo wrestler like I obviously as a 10 year old I'm not the size of an elephant but I guess what she's trying to do is call me fat (laughs) um and I and I think the worst thing was also like the comparison element because it's not just yeah. it's it wasn't just oh you're fat or like you're like an elephant it was you're an elephant compared to this person yeah that means they're better than you it's very comparative and I already felt like in primary school I was already aware that you know all my friends were smaller than me and you know I just didn't have like 
I didn't have that like stick thin figure. I've never, I never have. And like looking back, so many of my friends in school, both um, primary school and secondary school, but they did like they were thin, their like hips and whatever, like developed a bit later. Whereas I've never experienced being thin. And that was something that this particular family member always wanted, always made sure I was aware of. And in terms of like how I navigated it, like I was 10 years old, maybe younger. So I can't even really remember what I did, but I remember just being really upset and thinking that's just a horrible thing to say. And I think that's what really led me to to feeling like, bigger than everyone else like throughout my like adolescence but looking back as an adult again I can see that this person was trying to hurt me and I mean come on like in this world if you want to hurt someone you comment on their weight (laughs) like again it's like a just it's a low ball comment to make and yeah I guess I can just see I can I can step out as an adult and think you know I was never I was 10 like I you know it's such a stupid thing and you know this person clearly was hurting a lot themselves like and deflecting a lot of their pain and insecurity onto me and you know it doesn't make it right at all obviously but I guess I can just understand logically why that happened and I guess also it's validating to understand like why did I have all the problems I had like in understanding like why did I struggle with my body image and you know eating disorders and disordered eating well it it makes sense and I think if anyone's ever been to therapy or had coaching went around disordered eating body image like you would probably discuss like when did you first remember feeling like bad about your body and you can can understand the origins and if you haven't ever worked for a professional I actually really would recommend even just one session for you to make sense of like why are you struggling with what you're struggling with it doesn't necessarily take away the hurt but I think it just provides clarity and understanding and I think that is of course part of the healing process so yeah that was my first memory of being attacked (laughs) when it comes to my body Bless you. I think even them saying the animal elephant, I think that being like such a, like a common zoo animal, it just displays like the innocence and the childish sort of nature of it. But I just think it's such a shame that we start worrying about our bodies mm. that young. Like when you walk past the primary school now and you, you see the kids and you think, oh my God, you are physically, they are so tiny. And it's just heartbreaking to think of any of them being concerned about their body. And you think about the first time you started worrying about your body, it's because someone else said something to you. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's crazy. But I can definitely like relate on a level that I was always taller than everyone else. Mm -hmm. I was always the tallest. So even if we were physically the same size, I was always like, the giraffe that was like teetering over people Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean so like I definitely felt that insecurity and especially at primary school just like constantly looking down on everyone we've got to laugh about it I know yeah and it's so true that like I can't remember if I thought about my body before that yeah like we're not we don't come out of the womb hating our body it's because we've learned it from somewhere and I'm pretty sure it's so sad to say, but I'm pretty sure everyone listening has that memory, that first memory. When did I first learn that my body wasn't okay? Yeah. Which is so heartbreaking. That digs deep. (laughs) Yeah, I know. But let's move on. What's your next one? (laughs) My next comment, it was only a couple of weeks ago, actually. I can't remember the exact month, but basically I got the comment of, I wouldn't trust your ability to coach looking like that. And I received this comment. It was one of many, actually, just on the video of me existing at the gym. I think I was on um, the Stairmaster. I posted it to Instagram and it just hit the wrong side of the internet. So there was also comments on this post, just like commenting on my shape, um, saying that I looked like a door and things like that. And immediately 
especially with the first comment, I was like, how dare you question my ability as a coach based on my appearance? I was like, I literally help women navigate so many different things, reach so many different goals, whether it is finding balance with food, whether it is, you know, building strength within the gym or fat loss or anything. There's so many different goals um, that I help people reach. And I provide so many services. And I'm just like, how do you want my body to display? This is what I do as a coach. What does that even look like for you? Like, that's what I was really questioning. I was like, what do you want me to look like? Because you look through every single sport, you compare a runner's body, like on average, a runner's body to a weightlifter's body, they look completely different. So I was just like, what do you want my body to look like? Because it sounds to me, especially, you know, with the person calling me a door, I was just like, you are really just trying to push the latest trend of small waist, perfect big bum onto me. And I was just like, you know, let me tell you, I've done years and years of work on my body image. And I am definitely not going to let a handful of people make me believe that my body is just a trend again, because that's definitely how I felt years and years and years ago, that as a woman, I should just morph myself into whatever is desirable at the time. And I know a lot of people are going to feel that way. And some people may even still feel that way. But what did I do in this situation? Being older, being wiser, but still, you know, I don't receive that many hate comments online. Most of them, (laughs) luckily, have been to my face. (laughs) But I called them out. I screenshotted it and just shared it to my stories because I was just like, you know what? You are gross. You're embarrassing. I'm just going to embarrass you further by just sharing your name, sharing your comment. And that's just what I did like instinctually. Then to protect my own peace, I deleted the comments. I then blocked all the individuals because there was like a handful of men. I checked out their profiles. They were definitely men. And because I knew that this video was still sort of reckoning the views, I was like, this is still on the wrong side of Instagram. I just didn't want myself to be exposed further to potentially more negative comments. So I simply just turned the comments off in the end. And I think it's important to know as someone who has a public platform, like if you don't keep your account on private, everyone will always have access to your social media profile, but you can still take action to protect your own peace. Like just because your profile is out there, it doesn't give people the permission to be shitty human beings so yeah I did that because I was just like you know what you don't deserve to see any of my pictures anymore you don't deserve to see my content or watch my videos or whatever um and then I sought support from friends I definitely remember sending you a voice note Harriet um I spoke to my partner after I'd sort of posted the the pictures on my Instagram story as well, like I had loads of messages of other people just, you know, reiterating that they were in fact clueless dickheads and just, you know, checking I was okay, sending me words of support and positivity and things like that. And that's just sort of how I dealt with that situation. And I don't know whether there was a better way I could have dealt with that, but I think for me, that's what helped me deal with it and move forward in the quickest way possible so yeah yeah thank you for sharing that it's so interesting to hear a past experience of when like years ago and an an experience that you had only a few weeks ago and how you navigated that in a different way but oh my gosh I have so much to say first of all I think there's no wrong way to do a bit in that regard like you you just have to do what you have to do in that moment and also what I was thinking about as you were speaking is we put this expectation on ourselves that we need to be really strong and hear all these hate comments and just like, you know, have them flood in and just look at every single one and just not be bothered by it. But actually, if you have the access to walk away and if that's in the form of turning off comments, blocking people, then absolutely, you don't need to endure that if there's a way that you can like block it out. And I know I maybe potentially had times in the past where I felt like, no, I need to be stronger than that. When actually, no, if someone is throwing abuse at you, whether that's some random old white British man from Colchester (laughs) on the internet, or that's like someone in your life, 
you actually don't even you don't need to endure it and you don't need to respond to it yeah 100 percent. it's all about protecting your pace yeah isn't it and just doing what's best for you at the time and just not try not to take it to heart it's okay like if you have a couple of days where it just keeps popping up in your brain I definitely had that I was like why am I still thinking about this like why am I still giving them any part of my brain space um but I think these sorts of things are traumatic and yeah to sort of be bombarded in that way as well was just horrible but I was like I'm not gonna shed a tear over you like previous me probably would have cried Mm. whereas I was like no you're not having any of that energy we're not shedding a tear over it anymore I was really satisfied with how I dealt with it and everyone was just like so wonderful and I think it is so important to share because I don't think many people talk about it a lot of people just think oh well it comes with the territory Mm. and I don't think it does like I don't think people are allowed to be horrible yeah so just like trying to take that power off people one block button at a time absolutely I mean people say well if you put yourself online you 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 have to expect opinions and it's like I get what they're saying is that like it can happen but it doesn't mean that it's right for it to happen yeah and that's the the key difference if, if you comment on someone's social media with an abusive comment that's not okay yeah absolutely and I know you can you can block certain words but you know when the person's calling me a door I'm like how the hell (laughs) are we gonna try and filter that one out but it's also like you know what did that person expect me to do like how did they want me to react did they want me to be like actually you are so right I am gonna start eating a shit ton of protein again and start Mm. building my glutes just for you Mm. like I think it's I think a lot of people don't even click on the profiles that they are commenting on yeah and I I think maybe if they'd have maybe realized the issues that I'd had with food before like how much time and effort I put into body acceptance and just you know loving the skin I'm in I feel like half of those people wouldn't make the comment I just think sometimes it's just too easy Mm. But you know what? I think some people still would like. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I had a reel that went like super viral, like quite a few months ago, like back in August, and no one was abusing me, but they were just like making disgusting comments about eating disorders. And one person made such a disgusting comment that I won't even repeat. And I actually messaged him. And the worst thing was in his bio, he shared that he had like two daughters, like young daughters, and like he had a family, he was a dad. And I messaged him, how on earth do you think that's okay? Like you have daughters. And he told me to bore off. There's these trolls online who just don't care. Yeah. And but they're raising families. Yeah. And that's what's scary. Yeah. But yeah, I'd love to hear your next experience, Harriet. So my last experience, uh, or my next experience I'm going to share actually happened also a few weeks ago. And I went for a photo shoot to get some professional photos for my website, I had the photo shoot, whatever. And then afterwards, they we were going through the photos and they were like, oh yeah, if you want any retouch, then let us know. Because obviously we can like slim down your arms and slim down other areas of you. And whilst it clearly wasn't a hate comment and they weren't trying to be abusive. It was, I guess, an indirect comment. Yeah. It was still a body comment. It was still, there were still like implications. And I actually went into this situation knowing that there were probably going to be some comments on my body, especially when it came to retouching, because on like the, the package that I purchased, it said X amount of photos could be retouched. And I was like, what? I wonder what can be retouched. In that moment, I just decided just to not respond, to not say anything. I think I might have said, oh, you know, I think I look, I think I I don't think I'll need that. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, you shouldn't be saying that, blah, 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 blah. And someone else in my position might have said something and that would have been totally valid as well. But I guess that the point I'm trying to make is sometimes no response is the best response. When you've done the work on yourself and you know yourself so well, and like you've done the body image work, you don't need to go through so much efforts to protect yourself anymore because like you 
you've you've done that already like I feel like I have like an invisible shield around me that actually if anyone like now like made a comment about my body I think I'd be more pissed at the fact that people are just being rude and how they think that's okay and it'll be less of oh my gosh like I'm going to internalize that comment now I'm insecure about my arms like oh should I get my arms reached? like there was none of that because I'm comfortable in my skin and the only person who needs to worry about my body is me yeah 100% and I do just think like our energy is precious mm-hmm. um, I think the older you get and like the more we mature the more we can be just like selective with how we use it and I think sometimes you just you know whether it's a conversation with a professional or a family member or a friend you can just decide is this the conversation I want to have mm. no <laughs> a lot of the time it's going to be no It'll be like I haven't got the effort for this yeah. as well yeah. you can just walk away like you you're not here to educate everyone yeah. you're not here to help everyone if yeah. people want to help themselves they can do if you tried to re-educate every single person you'd be here for too long <laughs> yeah like I'm not here to teach adults to be adults and yeah. that was I guess maybe the reason why I had a bit of regret of like messaging that that old man <laughs> on Instagram yeah. because like if he's gonna make a disgusting comment on my yeah. Instagram post is he going to be receptive to a DM from me no you know people they need to move by themselves they need to push themselves and I'm here to help people who want to listen. Yeah, like listen to a different opinion and understand a different perspective. But if I can, if I get a vibe that you're not in that position, then like, I'm really not going to bother. Yeah, 100%. We're all adults. Yeah. He's a big boy. I love that. I think he does that so, so well. I'm going to share a funny one now. And this is actually <laughs> legitimately hilarious. So there was a man and the same guy who proceeded to comment the word pig all over my Instagram, all over pictures, all over videos. He replied to my stories with it. Then he also <laughs> then he also started to leave the comment oink. <laughs> and at this point, it all happened like within like a sh- very short space of time. Like all these messages like flooded through within like 10 minutes. So I just picked up my phone and it was like, pig, 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 oink, oink, oink. (laughs) Oh my God. I couldn't be offended. I could not be offended at that point just from the noise. So I told my partner and we were both just laughing about it. I told you, Harriet. And we were just laughing about it. And now like as a joke, my partner actually will call me oink. Um, (laughs) We are are so not hurt by this. I did still block him. I did (laughs) did still block him. Because I was like, just stop like filling up my notifications with your pig emojis and things like that. <laughs> um, but it's just oh, the noise of oink, I think, honestly, just made it so funny for me. So that's like oh. a really like hearted hate comment. Is this person just sitting in their room just doing yeah. that? I want to hear his thought process. Yeah. Of, I'm going to take this one step further. Some people making these disgusting comments are just not okay. This is what they do in their spare time. It, I mean, they're probably just like, I know there's a lot of like spam accounts out there and just people who drive pleasure and fun from just leaving crap all over people's posts. But I just, that's like a hilarious one that has really stuck with me. And even that was only a couple of weeks ago. Oh my God. So my Instagram is really hitting the wrong <laughs> <laughs> not my target audience at all <laughs> not your target audience hun <laughs> oh my gosh my next one is <laughs> still a little bit sad but <laughs> but I laughed when I read this one actually because <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I put the um in the notes I put in general, just being bullied at school for my face with a heart emoji. <laughs> and this one, I think, has like a really um, positive message at the end. But I have a beauty spot on my face. People were just so horrible. And like people used to point it out all the time, even like people who 
were nice would say oh like you've got that mold on your face like so cute and it's really interesting because like now I don't even notice it but yeah so that happened in school and what else got bullied for my hair like my hair was never right um got bullied for my teeth I got I didn't get bullied for my lips but the same fam- family member who told me that I was an elephant also said that I had really disgusting thin lips. I actually ended up in 2018, I actually got lip fillers because that comment stayed with me. Did I ever, ever told you that? No, I did not know that you had lip fillers. Yeah, like a really tiny amount. I can't remember how much, but like I, I went and I said like, I want them to look natural and they've obviously dissolved by now. I was so conscious of like my skincare routine like I ended up when I was in uni I was working for Estee Lauder it was in our contract that in certain well first of all it was in our contract that we had to wear full face of makeup but also certain months of the year we had to wear certain color lipstick so breast cancer awareness month we had to wear pink lipstick like bright pink and it also corresponded with Mother's Day where we had to wear pink lipstick February Valentine's Day we had to wear red lipstick December as well we had to wear red lipstick and anytime there was like a a campaign um we normally had to work a really bright lipstick and I remember telling my manager like I really really don't like wearing bright lipsticks because I think it accentuates the fact that I've got like I don't my lips and I just don't want to and I remember I was told it's in your contract so you have to and it was just like I felt so conscious and the funny thing is, now I really like my lips. I look at, I can look at my lips and be like, I love them. And my lips haven't really changed. Like, the, yeah, I got lip filler, but that dissolved. <laughs> like, that's definitely not there anymore. So, like, my lips haven't changed yet. I see my lips completely differently. I just changed my mindset. And similarly, like, with, like, the beauty spot on my face, I actually don't notice it at all. I don't know if it's because it's faded, but... I forget that it's there and no one even comments. So I I don't know if it's just because it's faded, but a lot of things that I used to hate, I now like love. Even I I used to hate my hair. I used to think my hair was so thin and disgusting. Now I love my hair. And it's like, there's so much stuff about me that I used to detest, but now I like. And these things haven't changed, but my mindset has changed. I also think it's the thing of when you're in primary school and high school, you are desperate to be like everyone else. Mm. And everyone else thinks we should all be like carbon copies of each other, whether it's, you know, the trainers that you wear, like whether it was even like the school trousers. And um, when I went to high school, there was this like one brand, I think it, I don't know what it's called, like Miss Sexy or Miss Something. Miss, oh, I don't know. They were like really tight. Mm. black trousers and basically all the girls would wear them and I think I got like an off-brand version because my mom was literally like the rate I was growing my legs were getting so long that I couldn't like have trousers for a really long period of time because I was just getting so tall so quickly that I'd have like a massive gap between my trousers and my ankles and at school that was worse than anything Mm. so Everyone just wanted to be exactly the same, whether it was pencil cases or phones, everyone had a Blackberry. And if you had anything different, you were just a weirdo. Mm. So I think once you get out of that environment, especially sort of getting past, you know, whether you went to college or sixth form or university, you get out into the real world and all you want to be, or at least this is how I felt, all I wanted to be was different. Mm. I didn't want to look like, anyone else and it was liberating to sort of for me especially like to maybe I don't know walk in the gym and be the only one wearing like a bright pink outfit like that was like so much fun to me and I know that's just like a tiny example but we sort of go out into the world we realize we're different like I don't know I'm trying to like think of like bits that are on my face that not everyone has I have like dimples and things like that and I just learned to love that as well and I was very much the same as you like with my lips not that they necessarily I'm looking at them um in the laptop right now and they don't (laughs) look thin but I was always convinced I was always going to have lip filler I never ended up doing it 
because I just forgot that it was even something I had an issue with and I think that's especially like with my thighs and things like that I just forgot Mm. that I had a problem with it (laughs) just because my my brain just filled with other things that were more important Mm -hmm. than specific body parts I think that's probably like a significant factor as well that I was just more interested in other things yeah the 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 key really is to make other parts of your life more important and yeah. like if the size your legs your lips whatever start to matter less to you you start to think about it less it starts to bother you less but the problem is is that we we make our self-worth just about our body image and how we look and that's like super stressful yeah definitely and like this is sort of why as well as as we've got older we've continued to sort of receive hate comments um especially like online and stuff that it just affects us less Mm -hmm. we don't cry about it anymore like we may have done in high school because we just know actually and especially like with the jobs that we do we know that if people are being hateful towards each other or spreading negativity they most likely do have something going on themselves they probably got a lot of self-hatred for themselves or they're probably going through something really difficult and they're just taking it out on other people and that doesn't justify their behavior but I think it just gives a bit of understanding as to why sometimes people act the way they do and just help you maybe be a little bit more forgiving for your own sake Mm. to just be able to move on and not take it with you as well yeah yeah absolutely happy people don't insult you based on your looks a happy and healthy person wouldn't do that and yeah I guess that's a good place to end I think one and done one and done but yeah I hope that us sharing these like really raw experiences with you has helped whether you've had insults thrown at you I hope you feel that you can like relate to us and like you feel better and I hope that you know if you've never had a hate comment or a hate insult and you're that's something that you're really scared of now you're just a little bit less scared that's really was the mission for this episode so I really hope that we've achieved that 100% it's just about helping you guys protect yourselves and protect your peace a little bit more but I hope that we made you feel less alone and a bit more sane as well 100 percent. and if you're struggling feel free to dm us on the rewrite the rules pod instagram and you know we can give you some words of advice and guidance like we're here for you and yeah as always if there's anything you want us to talk about then let us know we add it to our list and we'll definitely do that and yeah i just thank you so much for listening and tuning in We will see you later, guys. Yes, see you later. Bye-bye-bye. Bye. Bye.